Hello, I'm Kinnery Patel, President and Chief Operating Officer of Rocket Pharmaceuticals. I'm excited to be here today at the conference to share the knowledge we've gained at Rocket and to learn from others. Specifically, my presentation is going to be focusing on bringing a collaborative data-driven approach to advanced gene therapy products. I'm hoping that the knowledge I'll share will help expedite selling gene therapy products to patients around the world that really need it and they don't have the luxury of time. So let's work together to figure this out and advance more therapies to more patients with rare diseases. Cautionary statements that regarding the forward-looking things that I say are really my own views and not the views of the company. So Rocket Pharmaceuticals, what we do here is really special. We're seeking gene therapy cures. And we do this with an integrated pipeline focused on patients first and foremost and the root cause of the reason they have the disease. So we're focused on the gene of interest, the complex of interest. And our goal is really focusing on the disease and helping the patients live a better life. We do this regardless of platform that, that we approach. So we're a platform agnostic company, meaning we have multiple programs in ex vivo lenti gene therapy, as well as AEV focused on the heart. To date, Rocket has shown four programs out of four has had clinical proof of concept, meaning these programs have had clear mechanism action that we've taken into the clinic and we've shown that parents, patients that have actually enrolled in the study have a clear benefit risk. And two of these programs, I'm excited to say, are approaching BLA, MAA in Europe and US. So what makes us special and what makes us unique and how have we gotten here since the initiation of the company in 2016? Well, simple. It's through collaboration, it's through expertise, and it's through working with patient advocates and experts around the world, whether it's internal leadership or external CDMOs or the scientific individuals that have been working on gene therapy for to over 20 years. We do this really with rocket values first and foremost in the heart of everything we do. And the rocket values are really simple. They're so simple that they actually elevate what we do. Everything is based on the trust. We give each other trust to know when to go and make decisions, as well as when to make mistakes. And mistakes are welcomed at Rocket because through mistakes, we learn how to move the pipeline in an innovative forward way. We talk about generosity. Being generous means you're sharing not just your expertise and your knowledge, but you're generous with your time and your energy. And everything is done through collaboration and, and working together as one team, as one Rocket. And we do this through curiosity. No one has really done cell and gene therapy, right? We're in the forefront of innovation. Only way we can succeed is by being curious and asking ourselves questions that others may have on their minds. And if we do this correctly, and we do this constantly, we can actually elevate not just our individual selves, our company, but we believe humanity as a whole. So what is Rocket doing through these values and through mission? Well, we're focused on rare diseases. Rare diseases, as you know, there are 7,000 rare diseases out there. And many of these, actually 80% of these rare diseases have genetic origin, meaning they have a gene that has either been compromised or a gene mutation that may lead to a patient having negative impact. Unfortunately, 50 to 75% of these genetic diseases impact the kids. So childhood diseases impact in pediatrics, and many of these pediatrics, unfortunately, do not survive into their teenage years, let alone by the age of one or age of five. Only 30% of the kids with the rare disease actually see their fifth birthday, and that's quite devastating. And the worst part is even in 2022, we have less than 5% of these rare diseases that have a treatment option available. So we need to do a lot more. We need to work as a team and we need to do a lot more, not just within Rocket, which is focused on developing first in class gene therapies for life-threatening genetic diseases, impacting kids and adults using technologies like ex vivo lenti and AAV, but we need to do more as a field as a whole. Ex vivo lenti and AEV are the two therapy approaches that we talk about. And just to go into a little bit more about that, these approaches are used to advance our pipeline. Our V1 pipeline, as what we like to call, are the pipeline that's already in the clinic. And this pipeline includes Danon disease. Danon disease is quite unique because it's a disease that impacts hearts. And at this point, patients with Danon disease only have heart transplant if they're lucky enough to get a matched donor. If they don't have that, they may not survive into their 20s. So these kids really have unmet medical need and it progresses quite rapidly and unpredictably anywhere from the age of seven onwards. This program is currently in the clinic with fast track orphan and rare pediatric designation applications in place at this point in the US. 
Fanconia anemia and LED1, these are unique diseases because they are global studies with pivotal data readouts in both of these programs that are leading to conversations with health authorities to move them to Europe and US. Both of these programs also have all the bells and whistles, as you can imagine, for designations, meaning RMAT prime designations that helps us having collaborative discussions with health authorities and management within health authorities to move these programs efficiently as possible to patients that really need it. PKD is also another disease in XV volentine. We also have a wave two. I'm excited about the wave two program just as much as wave one, and in the future, look forward to speaking about them more. So drug development, as we think about drug development, normally you think about preclinical, in vivo, in vitro testing, moving to clinical, phase one, two, three, four, et cetera, right? Then you go to an FDA or EMA to get an approval and post-marketing. Well, in rare diseases, that's not the case. In rare disease, you need to think about things not sequentially, but in parallel or simultaneously. But while you have the same things being consolidated into phase one and phase two in many cases, phase two ends up being the pivotal study in many cases, the regulations that are derived to prove the benefit risk of a product remains the same as it is for a, uh, a rare disease product as it is for a standard disease product. What does that mean? Well, the regulation still says that you have to show the product is of high quality and can be consistently produced and they're safe for patients to get, but also efficacious and efficacious compared to the standard of care. So this paradigm doesn't change. What changes is how you evaluate every rare disease and how you um, apply the complexities in a unique way based on data and based on science. What are the, some of the things that you can do in drug development is to expedite these patients that have no treatment options, life-threatening diseases, severe diseases where they don't have luxury of time, you can design studies that are single-arm studies. You can use patients' knowledge and natural history, whether it's literature search, talking to the patients directly, or other means of understanding the disease better, to design a single-arm study with a clear mechanism of action, with a clear endpoint that allows you to get maybe an accelerated approval or an approval earlier on in the development. You could also do things in parallel. So US and Europe is something that we've focused on at, at Rocket, doing as parallel as possible. That way, most patients that need the therapies have access to the therapies as quickly as possible. And then you think about manufacturing, not after the fact, but we think about it before even submitting an IND. When you do that, what happens is you can actually be ready for commercialization and launch earlier and quicker. This, along with all the rolling expedited pathways that are available by health authorities around the world, like the FDA and the EMA, could help you increase your urgencies and help you efficiently bring these therapies to as many patients that can benefit from it as possible. So these are some of the ways that we've done to accelerate our therapies and to think about it in a holistic fashion, from learning from patients, experts, to working with health authorities and working with the regulatory frameworks that are available to make this better. And our approach is really simple. Our approach is focused on collaboration that drives innovation for patients. Having a global mindset, you can't focus on just a region. You have to think about patients, where they live, and how it impacts them. And then you have to make decisions based on science, based on data. But remember, you have to be agile with your decision making. You can't spend a year getting internal governance approvals to do something when there are patients that are passing away if they don't have access to therapy. So at Rocket, we focus on our North Star, which are the patients. And unfortunately, these patients don't have luxury of time. For example, LED1 is a case study I'd love to talk about later, but what's unique is that patient population, two thirds of the patients pass away by the age of two. So we can't have a lifetime to figure this out. So what we do is we approach gene therapy drug development in a way that integrates everything simultaneously as much as possible. The more we integrate all the stakeholders, like the health authority, like the CDMOs, industry, patients and patient advocacy groups, and the academia, the more efficient we can develop these therapies. And through that work, an example that I want to highlight is LAD1. LAD1, as you see the names in here, whether it's names of institutions from Spain that invented the product with UCL Gosh in UK, to even into institutions in Asia. For example, PI um, CON is a conference that happens in Asian markets. We went there in person ourselves, our chief medical officer myself, to meet the patients, to meet the treating physicians, and to understand how to design the study before we even had an IND open. We work with foundations like Jeffrey Models in order to make sure we can identify patients and help them be diagnosed earlier in their life. And we work with other organizations like Nino Jesus and UCLA, as well as UCL Gosh, to treat these patients. So this is an example of thinking not just clinical trials or academics, but also patients and advocacy groups around the world and bringing them all together in order to maximize our impact to patients. 
And we do this with these patients in mind. It's based on science, it's based on data, but it's based on a girl that you see in front of you. What does it mean for this patient to have a better life? What are the things that keeps this patient from living a normal life? And what we've learned is for LED1, a patient like that, what happens is, unfortunately, about 40% of the patients will not survive by the age of two. As you see in the curve here, the blue line, the severe patient population, all they need is if they had a CD18 expression on their neutrophil to be greater than 10%, they could live into adulthood. So all we have to do, I know it sounds kind of simple, but it's not, is get a CD18% of zero to two into 10% or higher. And if we do that, we could potentially help this child live into adulthood. So what has Rocket done? Well, we've developed a clinical study, phase one, two global study with fundings from CIRM and other organizations in order to expedite this. And our clinical data shows that nine patients that were treated, all the patients as you see here, we've had not only CD18 expression over 10%, it's greater than 20%, some approaching even 80 or 90%. We're not saying you need 80 or 90%, but the fact is that gene therapy has consistently shown that this data is making an impact for the patient in their cell biology and expression of CD18% at the peripheral bone, uh, bone marrow cells. And our totality of the study, as you see on the graph on the left, and I've been in drug development nearly 20 years and never seen such exciting clean cut data, 100% survival, right? Our phase one, two patients, nine patients treated out of nine in severe LED1 have had 100% survival with seven of them being followed for more than a year. We've seen a durable VCN that shows the integration of the actual corrected gene into the patient. We've seen 100% engraftment, and we've seen that not only have patients had good efficacy, but they've not had any safety-related adverse event or side effects of interest. So the benefit risk overall seems positive. So what's unique about LED program? Well, unique about LED program is you wouldn't believe that in 2018 we wrote the first IND and CTA, right? We wrote this program, IND and CTA, in 2018. In 2022, we're talking about top line data and how to get this drug officially submitted to the health authorities around US and Europe and UK and to, in order to make it accessible to more patients. We've seen efficacy across all the patients. We've seen large treatment effects based on primary and secondary endpoints. We've seen favorable safety. And here's the beautiful thing. We submitted that first INDCT application only after we had a, a, a commercial grade product available, meaning plasmid, vector, cell processing, analytics, they were all commercial grade. What the patient, first patient got in the phase one study is the same product that's gonna be commercial available. Why is that important? Well, as you know, in cell and gene therapy, it's CMC that's always lagging behind. When you make CMC changes from academic to one CDMO to the other CDMO, what you have by the time you get to commercialization is hodgepodge of data you're trying to make sense and you're trying to do comparability. If you can avoid the comparability issues and, and, and actually design a study that can allow you to do as apples to apples comparison as much as possible in complex rare diseases, you can be you can stand behind a clear benefit risk data that you're seeing clinically. And these are the learnings we've had. So the learnings that we keep applying, let's think globally, not locally. Let's focus on operational execution. It takes a lot of work and a lot of persistence to get a product in midst of COVID to come to a conclusion, to treat nine patients around the globe, get them to the clinical sites. We've had to think out of the box. And that's one of the unique things. And we sought advice from health authorities around the world to make exceptions when we needed to and to seek their advice as early as possible so we can do things the right way, the best way possible. We develop therapies based on science and we follow our science to impact patients. We design these clinical studies to be robust, but yet unique enough that is specific for the disease of interest so we can actually understand the disease as much as we can understand the patient impact. And our goal is really simple. We want to engage to, uh, to every single stakeholder possible. We want to communicate this information transparently to patients, to healthcare providers, and, and academic and investigators and, and scientific experts. So we can learn from this as much as we share information to teach them. And to officially develop drug for gene therapy or cell and gene therapy, you have to remember CMC cannot be second. As much as possible, invest early on. The more you can have a commercially grade product into a patient early as possible or have that commercialization strategy in mind, the more you can efficiently move these products to patients that really need it and they don't have the luxury of time. So you continue to innovate, you continue to learn from yourself and your own mistakes as well as from others. And if we do this well, we can actually make a difference.
here's a presentation talking about how we're making a difference. And this kind of summarizes the spirit of Rocket. Our wall of stars is a great way to recognize the spirit that Rocket has and how we do what we do and why we do what we do. Thank you. The Rocket Pharma family, numbering close to 200 team members and growing. Living and breathing core values. Trust. Generosity. Curiosity. Elevate. On a mission to develop gene therapy cures for people living with rare and devastating diseases. The only pure play gene therapy company harnessing the potential of both ex vivo lentiviral and in vivo AAV platforms. Compelling proof of concept across four clinical programs. The first company to show proof of concept for gene therapy targeting the heart. Achievements thanks to the rare disease patients participating in our clinical studies, helping to make our vision a reality. We put patients and their families first and strive to create a community where they can come together and feel supported. They are our driving force, our North Star. To celebrate and honor these remarkable people, we've handcrafted one star for each one of our stars, patients in Rocket's clinical trials. Located in our state-of-the-art AAV gene therapy manufacturing facility in Cranberry, New Jersey, the wall is a visual reminder to the Rocket family and visitors of the real stars. Patients. Let the stars guide us, drive us, and light our way to a brighter future for those living with rare and devastating diseases. See the true pioneers in gene therapy research. The patients. The brightest forces in our galaxy. Who remind and motivate us each and every day to seek gene therapy cures.